the Jewish New Testament, Hebrews chapters 5 through 7. For every Kohen Gadol taken from among men is appointed to act on people's behalf with regard to things concerning God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can deal gently with the ignorant and with those who go astray, since he too is subject to weakness. Also, because of this weakness, he has to offer sacrifices for his own sin, as well as those of the people. And no one takes this honor upon himself. Rather, he is called by God, just as Aharon was. So neither did the Messiah glorify himself to become Kohen Gadol. Rather, it was the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Also he says in another place, You are a Kohen forever, to be compared with Malachi Sedek. During Yeshua's life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions, crying aloud and shedding tears to the one who had the power to deliver him from death, and he was heard because of this godliness. Even though he was the son, he learned obedience through his suffering, and after he had been brought to the goal, he became the source of eternal deliverance to all who obey him, since he had done since he had been proclaimed by God as a Kohen Gadol to be compared with Malki Sadek. We have much to say about this subject, but it is hard to explain because you become sluggish in understanding. For although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the very principles of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. And anyone who drinks milk is still a baby without experience in applying the word about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those who whose faculties have been trained by conscious exercise to distinguish good from evil. Chapter 6 Therefore, leaving behind the initial lessons about the Messiah, let us go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of turning from works that lead to death, trusting God, and instruction about washing, smekha, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal punishment. And God willing, this is what we will do. For when people have once been enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, become sharers in the Ruh HaKodesh, and tasted the goodness of the God's word and the powers of the Olam Haba, and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them so that they turn from their sin. As long as for themselves they keep executing the Son of God on the stake, all over again, and keep holding him up to the public contempt. For the land that soaks up frequent rains and then brings forth a crop is to its owners, receives a blessing from God. But if it keeps producing thorn and thistle, it fails the test and is closed to being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Now, even though we speak this way, dear friends, we are confident that you have the better thing that come with being delivered. For God is not so unfair as to forget your work and the love you showed for him in your past service to his people and in your present service too. However, we want each one of you to keep showing the same diligence right up to the end when your hope will be realized so that you will not become sluggish but will be an imitator's of those who by their trust and patience are receiving what has been promised. For when God made his promise to Abraham, he swore an oath to do what he had promised. And since there was no one greater than himself for him to swear by, he swore by himself and said, I will certainly bless you and I will certainly give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham saw the promise fulfilled. Now people swear oaths by someone greater than themselves, and confirmation by an oath puts an end to all dispute. Therefore, when God wants to demonstrate still more convincingly the unchangeable character of his intention to those who were to receive what he had promised, he added an oath to the promise, so that through two unchangeable things, in neither of which God could lie, we 
who have fled to him a firm hold on the hope set before us, would be strongly encouraged. We have this hope as a sure and safe anchor for ourselves, a hope that goes right on through to what is inside the, par- the paraclete, where the forerunner has entered on our behalf, namely Yeshua, who has become a Kohen Gadol forever, to be compared with Melchizedek. Chapter 7 This Melchizedek, king of Shalom, a Kohen of God, Ha'ilon, met Avrahim on his way back from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Also, Avrahim gave him a tenth of everything. Now, first of all, by translation of this name, he is the king of righteousness. And then he is also the king of Shalem, which means king of peace. There is no record of his father, mother, ancestry, birth, or death. Rather, like the Son of God, he continues as a Kohen for all time. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch of Rahim gave him a tenth of the choicest spoils. Now the descendants of Levi, who become Kohenim, have a commandment in the Torah to take a tenth of the income of the people, that is, from their own brothers, despite the fact that they too are descendants from Ravahim. But Malki Tzedek, even though he was not descended from Levi, took a tenth from Abrahim. Also, he blessed Abrahim, the man who received God's promise, and it is beyond all dispute that the one who bless has higher status than the one who receives blessing. Moreover, in the case of the man who die, while in the case of Melchizedek, it is received by someone who is testified to still be alive. One might even go further and say that Levi, who himself received tenths, paid a tenth through Abrahim. And as much as he was still in his ancestor Abrahim's body when Malkith Tzedek met him. Therefore, if it had been possible to reach the goal through the system of Kohanim derived from Levi, since in connection with it, the people were given the Torah, what need would there have been for another, different kind of Kohen, the one spoken of as to be compared with Malki Sedek, and not to be compared with Haron? For if the system of Kohanim is transformed, there must of necessity occur a transformation of Torah. The one about whom these things were said belonged to another tribe, from which no one ever served at the altar. For everyone knows that the Lord arose out of Yehuda, and that Moshe said nothing about the tribe when he spoke about Kohanim. It becomes even clearer if a different kind of Kohen, one like Melchizedek, rises, who became a Kohanim not by virtue of a rule in the Torah concerning physical descendants, but by virtue of the power of an indestructible life. For it is stated, you are Kohanim forever, to be compared with Malki Sadek. Thus, on the one hand, the earlier rule is set aside because of its weakness and inefficiency. For the Torah did not bring anything to the goal, and On the other hand, a hope of something better is instructed through which we are drawing near to God. What is more, God swore an oath, for an oath was sworn in connection with those who became Kohanim now, but Yeshua became a Kohanim by the oath which God swore when he said to him, Adonai has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a Kohanim forever. Also, this shows how much better is the covenant of which Yeshua has become guarantor. Moreover, the present Kohanim are many in number because they are prevented by death 
from continuing in office. But because he lives forever, his position as Kohen does not pass on to someone else. And consequently, he is totally able to deliver those who approach God through him, since he is alive forever and thus forever able to intercede on their behalf. This is the kind of Kohanim Gadol that meets our needs, holy, without evil, without stain, set apart from sinners, raised higher than the heavens. One who does not have the daily necessity, like the other Kohanim Gadolim, of offering up sacrifices first for their own sin and only then for those of the people, because he offered one sacrifice once and for all by offering of himself. For the Torah appoints a Kohanim Gudim, men who have weakness. But the text which speaks about the swearing of an oath, a text later written than the Torah, appoints a son who has been brought to the goal forever.